Hello Stampers. My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. And this is my buddy Puccini. He usually helps me in the craft room and it's a toss-up sometimes whether he's a help or hindrance in the craft room. He's, he's been real feisty today. I have a very fun card for you today. I have a card that makes up four different ways. And so you can get four completely different looks and it only requires a couple of pieces of paper. So uh, I think you're going to enjoy this and so let's just get started. Here are my cards and um, I'll show you in a minute what pieces we need but I want to show you the four different ways this card works. So this is the first way and this is on a card base and on this one I used just jade because jade was in here and I used our punch for these flowers and a punch for these flowers and on the inside I put a little piece of white so you could put maybe a happy birthday message there or just a note and then on the inside it opens like this and you can see all one two three four panels and the piece that you write on is hidden from view by the second fold. So that's one way that this card comes together. The next way that this card comes together is when you glue this piece down so that your card still picks up from this end but it opens to three panels. And this little piece, this little flap here is glued down to here so now we've got um, three uh, uh, three panels and a different kind of message and flowers. These were kind of fun to figure out. This paper is gorgeous and um, I was finding all different kinds of um, dyes and things where the leaves looked kind of like the leaves in the paper. Then this is a third way that this closes. So in this case you would not only glue this piece down but you would glue this piece down so that now my card opens like a regular card but my message area is hidden and this has got a few little die pieces some of those black matte uh, knots um, gems here then this is the fourth way and with this one what you do is everything is glued down so but only along the edges with some tear tape so that you can stamp a piece to fit in this upper pocket. This is wishing you a wonderful birthday and has a nice big place for you to write your message and you could leave it like that or you could have your message going across this way with this piece pulling out here. And the other thing is that when you glue this down with the tear tape just on either side here, this makes a second pocket. So this could be a gift card holder or money or a little another little 3x3 three three envelope with some cash in it or something like that. And I didn't even put any embellishments on this one. But this is the fourth way. And it's all the same two pieces of paper. The only piece that is not uh, well, and it's common on three of them, is this piece on the inside. So let me tell you what it takes to make this card. Now, for this one, I chose this piece of paper. Uh, let's see. This one and this one are made with some of the free paper from Sailabration. And these are made with, um, let's see, a different paper that is not Sailabration but is that big graphic impressions. Um, and I'll put it up on the screen for you. It's just beautiful paper. Let me look at that stuff. It's just gorgeous. And it has dyes. And so I used a couple of dyes and a couple of colors to be complimentary on this. So what we're going to do is make it out of this paper. And I'm probably going to end up making this one that is pretty clamped down or this one. So let's just get started here. And what I did to show you how it changes 
I have a piece of pale papaya and this piece of paper has pale papaya. It's got flirty flamingo around the outside of the daffodils. It has old olive. It has mossy meadow. It has black. It has very vanilla. It's got all different kinds of colors and this beautiful pale papaya on the back. And so if you wanted a very subtle look, then um, you would put this on a backing of pale papaya. If you wanted something that was a little bit more bold, this is a perfect example by putting it on a card base that is flirty flamingo that picks up the flirty flamingo pieces around the flower. And then I cut an additional base in old olive so that we could see what it would be like with the old olive base. And I will have to say that the pale papaya makes this not enough contrast for me. While it's very pretty, um, it's just a little bo more boring. <laughs> so I'm going to eliminate the pale papaya option here. And we will go with either a flirty flamingo background or this green background. And it just depends on how big a pop of color you want on this. And I think for me, I'm going to go with the green. I like the contrast. I like how it picks up the green in the leaves. So what you need to make this is you need a piece of designer series paper that is five and a quarter inches wide. And you have to be mindful of your pattern. If your card is going to be like this, then you want to make sure when you cut this piece, your flowers or whatever it is, is uh, right side up. You wouldn't want to put this on here. Those look like they're all upside down. Uh, or this way, and then they would be facing right or left, and that's no good. On this one, I decided to do it this way. So this piece of paper is five and a quarter by 11 and 3 quarters. You're just going to nip up one quarter inch on the end here. Then your score lines are 1 and 3 quarters, 4 and 3 quarters, and 7 and 3 quarters. So 1 and 3 quarters, 4 and 3 quarters, and 7 and 3 quarters. And now I went ahead and uh, just did all of my scores um, face up here and put them here and then just folded them the way they needed to be folded. So this first one comes in this way and for this card it's very important that you get the top and the bottoms lined up with uh, with the edges of the other piece of paper. So there is that one lined up pretty well then this one we want to cover that next fold line and we also want this one um, to line up again with the papers that are here and I can see I'm just a tiny bit out of alignment here. I'm going to fix that right down here on the bottom and let me get that, make sure it's exactly right on the top. Right there, okay. And then once that's furnished, I'm in good shape. I'm absolutely dead solid um, even on those. Then um, it's very simple because we're just going to take this piece of paper and we're going to put some seal on it. And we're going to place this with a similar margin all the way around on this piece of card. And there we go. All right. And this is that beautiful paper um, that is free in sale abrasion. And it is called Daffodil Afternoon 12 by 12 Designer Series Paper. And it's available free for a $50 purchase. 
This paper is just gorgeous. Um, this could also go on a black background. Um, there's so many things you can do with it. Now then, so this is done and then we have to decide. I think I'm going to fold this piece down flat because with this one, sometimes it depends on the paper on the back whether you like the pattern. I like this soft little polka dot pattern. I think it's real pretty. And so I don't mind that being there. Um, if it bothered you, you could piece, put a piece of black or any of these other contrasting colors in a strip right down the center of this and um, resolve that as an issue. We need a piece of basic white for the inside of our card to write a message. So I'm going to show you what I did. I put this at the three inch mark and then I backed it away, oh, a 32nd of an inch because this is almost exactly three inches and I've got a fold there and a fold here. So it's a less generous three inch cut than I might ordinarily do. So it's a tick under three inches. And then I did this by five inches. And this piece then is ready for the inside of our card. And we're going to add a little bit of seal to it. And put that right here on the inside of our card so that it doesn't impede the folding and still has the right margins. And there we go, that's in there now and nice and hidden from the outside. So just a touch under three inches will get that kind of an effect for you. And so here we have the basis of our card. Now, if we were to turn this into a the pocket card, you could put a big decoration on here and put some tear tape here and create the piece that goes inside, but I'm going to make more of a traditional card. Now, I've done a couple of different things. We've got this on an old olive base, and so I have decided to make this a happy birthday, and I got a piece of designer series paper that has the same pale papaya and stamped my happy birthday and this happy birthday comes from um, Wildflower Path. And that's this one, Wildflower Path. And it's got a real pretty happy birthday and a nice thank you. And so that's the one I used. So I did one happy birthday on the pale papaya in black. Then I did a white, should have done that in, in very vanilla. And then I did three others, two others, happy birthday in black with white. They should all be very vanilla. One in the old olive to match the olive in the background. And one in the flirty flamingo to pick up this piece of flirty flamingo. Now, this card obviously needs something else. So I cut out from a piece of scrap three of these daffodils. And then from another piece of paper in there, I cut out these white um, or vanilla daffodils with some little uh, pale papaya and pink uh, flirty flamingo flowers. And because uh, I thought either one of them might work to stick down on this and then maybe put my happy birthday on here. And, and put it down here and have it be like this. And this, as I look at it, feels awfully busy against this. So maybe this one with three little flowers that could, we could raise on dimensionals is really what we need. And I think, uh, I think the pale papaya, the one done on pale papaya, kind of disappears a little bit, although that's not bad. Um, then there's the white, which really should be vanilla. I'm going to get a piece of vanilla and we'll stamp that again. Here's a piece of very vanilla. That'll look a lot better. So uh, I'm going to grab my stamp and my black ink here and we'll have 
yet another choice to look at. So I'm going to ink this up and kind of put it down in this corner right there. And that's not very straight. Let me try that again on this other side. Get that inked up just the way I want it and put it down in that corner. That's a little bit better. So on this one, what I'm just going to do is trim this happy birthday down and trim it, oh, at about half an inch so I have a little bit of a margin above the words and below. And so there's the happy birthday in the vanilla, which I think looks a lot better. And so then I did it in Old Olive, and then I did it in the Flirty Flamingo. I just wonder also if maybe I would fussy cut out just a couple of these daffodils here from the top of this piece, and maybe that could be decoration on the inside for our inside of the card. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. There we go. All right. Uh, and so I think what I'm going to use is this happy birthday here on the very vanilla. Um, and I'm going to use these little three flowers and I'm going to bump those up on dimensionals. Okay, so now it's just placement. I think right up there a little bit tiny bit above center and I'm going to take my happy birthday and I'm going to also put it up on a dimensional and I'm just going to use these bones right here to do that and that way I can put this little strip across the back there we go and I can put my happy birthday right here underneath my flowers so that it kind of butts up against the edge of where this card opens. And I think that looks real pretty. Now we have our little bunch of paper here and this on the inside really should also be very vanilla and I may fix that a little bit later but I think that these flowers can go right down here across the bottom or the top or the inside here and create a little decoration for the inside of our card. And I think maybe just a little bit of dot runner on that because I don't want any dimension on the inside. And put that in place right here in this corner and there we've got a little bit of decoration for the inside of our card, and isn't that just pretty? Now then, we have some um, of the 2021-23 gems. We could just do plain old rhinestones, but maybe these dark green ones with a little bit of uh, color shimmer might work here. The more I look at those, the more I think that might just do the trick. So I'm going to set a few of these Evening Evergreen um, gems, some of the large ones, and a few of the small ones. Maybe right down here. And maybe another one. I keep trying to do this without my pick tool and it's crazy. Okay, so how about one smaller one there and another small one
be down here. Okay, so there we go. Isn't that pretty? It almost cries out for a little piece of ribbon. Um, let's see what kind of ribbon we've got here. We've got some of this pretty pale papaya ribbon. Open weave ribbon, pale papaya. And it's just gossamer enough that I think that kind of adds a little something to this. I kind of like it right in here, but that means I need to move this rhinestone here, which I'm going to do and maybe put right up here in this corner. And then I'm going to use this opportunity right here to use a glue dot and put that little piece of ribbon in there. I love it when I can add a texture to this. So I'm going to put that on a glue dot and tuck that ribbon right here in with my flowers. And there we go. That is my project for the day. And so let me bring back all of the iterations. I made quite a few of these in different colors and using um, different papers. And I'm, I'm really loving this fold. By the way, this, um, this fold is not mine originally. I got the idea for this card from Patty Bennett. And Patty's been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator forever <laughs> in the Stampin' Up! world. And she's quite the famous lady. And she does a beautiful job. And if you've never seen any of her work, you should go look her up. She does a, an occasional video, but mostly she works on her blog from her blog. So there is our card for today. Happy birthday. I'm very happy with the way that one came out. I think it's very pretty. So let me bring back the various ones that I showed you from before. We have the one here that ended up being the pocket card and gift card holder, which is one of the choices. Then we have... Um, Some of these other cards here that I made with this uh, fold. And what's wonderful about this, this is basically two or three pieces of paper. Your backing piece, your designer series paper, and a little bit of white on the inside. And in the case of this one, that's more of a note card, I put something here. So you could put one message here stamped message there and then your written message back here and I think they all came out just beautifully now these are the ones that I made the four different ways it opens completely with just the front flap down with two flaps glued down and then this one that makes um, a two pocket um, uh, folding card here so that is the the project and then I'll show you a couple of others that I made this one um, with that crazy paper the front of that crazy paper uh, that's free in celebration with all of those wild flowers so I used the daisy punch to make um, a flower to go on there and let's see there's one more and there it is with the pale papaya background and some yellow gems and some of these didn't get any gems on them at all but you kind of get the idea this is so versatile and if you have a lot of old designer series paper and you're looking for ways to use it up this is absolutely wonderful um, you could create a series gift cards to give to somebody you could put three or four of these in an acetate box and give them have one be birthday, sympathy, thinking of you, thank you, gift box full of cards using similar kinds of paper, and I think it would be a lovely gift. And so that is the project. This is the one we made today, so I'm going to put that one on top, and I'm really pleased with the way that one came out. All right, it is still January, and in January, Stampin' Up! has a join offer, 
and it's a great offer. The join offer is $125 worth of product for $99, which is the normal deal. And then in January and February, you get to pick two additional stamp sets, just so long as they're not celebration or host set. And so there's, you know, two catalogs full of stamp sets that you could order. And um, so it adds another 40 or $50, depending on what stamp set you choose, um, to your join offer. Um, and if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Uh, and or you could join my team. I'm always looking for new team members. So that would be fantastic. And let's see here. Uh, all for my, my drawing for the month of January is a $60 shopping spree on me. And you put yourself in the drawing by placing an order of any size on my store, albedinger.stampinup.net. And you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. So that's it for me, and I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye!